Hello YouTube, this is Kurt and welcome to the Kurt Winters YouTube channel dedicated to bringing you advice on collecting cars and celebrating the history of these amazing machines. So this is a 2014 Terrain SLT in titanium white, um, which is the entry level vehicle uh, for the GMC lineup. Uh, it shares the platform with the Chevrolet Equinox, and it's also referred to as uh, the Theta platform. So in today's video, we'll kind of talk about what you got uh, for $30,000 back in 2014. Um, we'll go over some of the odd ownership experiences that I've had along the way uh, since I've owned it uh, for about a year and a half. So stick around. So let's kind of talk about some of my personal experiences, um, talk about um, what I paid for it and what that original MSRP was. So after doing some digging um, with the backup camera, the uh, navigation, and the, uh, the Sirius, um, this car came out at around $30,000 uh, MSRP. And I actually looked up my records and I paid twelve uh, seven for it. So you're looking at roughly seventeen thousand in depreciation U.S. Now, the car did have over a hundred thousand miles for on it. I think it was about one hundred thirty thousand. But I liked the look of the car. I felt it was taken care of, uh, so I went in. So I went ahead and I purchased it. Okay, so let's kind of go ahead and talk about the three um, quirks, um, maybe oddities that you need to know about. Uh, we're going to take a walk around to the front in a second uh, to show you the first one that really uh, kind of teed me off. But um, changing this car's battery uh, is no easy uh, task. Um, I will actually link a description below. First we got change in the battery. Uh, the second thing, uh, and you can google it, um, is something called the Chevy Shake. Um, and what you're essentially going to run into is in speeds of 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, uh, there is a shake to the platform of the car. Now, I am hoping uh, in an upcoming video that I can get some new rubber on this girl and kind of help get rid of that. But I'm telling you, the Chevy Shake is a real thing and I've experienced it in this car. And the last thing that I want to talk about is, is just kind of my disappointment with GMC's build quality of this particular car. Um, and we'll go into that a little bit more later in the video. So let's go take a look at that front end and pop that hood and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, uh, like I said before, there are uh, some really good videos on changing the battery and I'm gonna link those below. But here are your jump points if you want to either jump the car or if you uh, wanna put her on a battery charger as I try not to lose that piece. And we found it. Now, uh, we've got your uh, negative and positive here. Uh, here's where you're gonna hook up your red terminal and l look at this guy. I, I don't know if, if the camera can get a good shot of that, but um, I've never seen a battery jump point like that that just looks like a couple of screws uh, holding some kind of line there. And at first I was thought, I thought, at first I thought, wow, I'm screwed. I'm gonna have to take this whole battery off uh, just to charge it. But again, thanks to the power of YouTube, they said, no dummy, you do have outside charge points. So that is the first weird quirk as far as jumping and 
and changing the battery on this car. Luckily, I haven't had to change the battery yet. I try to keep it on the battery tender as much as possible so I don't have to go down that road. Okay, let's move on to the next point, shall we? And remember, if you enjoy the content of this video, don't forget to click subscribe and join the tribe. And also, don't forget to hit that like button and leave a comment. Okay, so, so far, as far as the uh, drawbacks of the weird quirks and features of this car, we've talked about changing the battery and jumping the battery. We've talked about uh, the Chevy Shake, um, which, in my opinion, is a real thing. And now, let's really... I don't like to end on a negative note when making three points, but let's talk about the build quality of this car. Um, first of all, let's take a look at the top of this car for you, okay? Um, when I push down on the metal, you can actually see that this is, I believe it's made out of recycled RC Cola cans, but it's unbelievable. I don't know if uh, my camera crew can get a good look at that, but that is just ridiculous. Now, I get it that they put roof racks up here and these are pretty sturdy, um, I gotta say, but there's just really no excuse for that. Any type of minor hailstorm, rock, um, good Lord, a big fat grasshopper or murder hornet, if that hits the top of your car, it's going to dent it. This car has already been through two minor hailstorms, and luckily the white hides it, but I'm telling you, the build quality on Chevy is not quite what it used to be, at least speaking from my experience with these first generation Theta platform terrains. The other thing you're gonna notice uh, that kind of bothered me, where you hit a puddle, I was beginning to find rust running all along the seam. And I don't know if the cameraman can get in here, but you can actually see th this, this should have been rubber lined. Um, they stopped right here. Uh, I looked on both sides. Leave a comment below if, I, if I'm missing something, but water gets in here and it rusts like no other. Even when I wash it, I park it at an angle I leave all the doors open. I make sure I wax and properly uh, dry that out. And that was kind of a big letdown because um, I'm a GMC guy, uh, if you didn't know that, and I was really surprised that GMC is building this kind of product. Okay, so as a daily driver, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Um, it's a mid-sized SUV that really drives more like a compact car. Plenty of room, very forgiving, not necessarily fast if you've got the four banger in it like I do and I leave in eco mode. Um, but there were three experiences that I've had along the way that I really feel it's important for you, the viewer, to know before you put your son, daughter, wife, husband, or anyone in this car. Um, the first uh, major issue that I had with it was I was driving home in a Texas storm. And I don't know if you've been in Texas, but the weather changes fast and it was a flipping monsoon uh, coming straight at me. Um, I had my, my windshield wipers cranked all the way up, water's coming in, and all of a sudden my wipers completely stop. Now, what do I mean by completely stop? They came over this way and just stopped right here. So I flipped them on, flipped them off. Now, I'm doing 70 in the middle lane of uh, 114, and I, I absolutely have no vision. And I'm not kidding, I had to Ace Ventura style 
uh, allow me to demonstrate with my head completely out the window like this uh, just to get to an off-ramp. Now, when I took it to GMC, this is actually a recall that you can look up on Google. And if you're in an area where it rains a lot, I would highly, highly recommend uh, that you push your dealership to get that fixed. I've also read on the internet where people have had this happen two or three times. So um, something to keep in mind, if you are going to be driving this car um, in heavy rain or in a monsoon. Now in Texas, speaking of Texas weather, in Texas you can get away with it a little bit more uh, because it's more arid and it's more dry. Okay, so let's talk about the other, a uh, couple of the other major issues that I had with this car. If we walk around uh, over here, um, what was happening is when I first purchased the car uh, from uh, uh, GMC, um, what I was noticing is, is that it braked fine, no, no issues and no noises. But after about a thousand, two thousand miles, what I was getting was not only a loud uh, squeal whenever I was slowing down to about 10 or 15 miles an hour, I was also getting, um, like if you pull into a parking garage and you completely cut it all the way, I was getting a loud clicking noise uh, from either side of the front end of the car. Um, and long story short, talking to three different mechanics, all of which I thought I was crazy, I used the power of the internet, something I want to pass on to you guys, and I told them, hey, the wheel bearings in this car, they have over 140,000 miles on it. It's time to change the wheel bearings. Every mechanic told me, no, it's your brakes and pads. They are warped. Well, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, I changed my brakes and pads three different times and I had the same effect every time. I'd be good to go for five to 2,000 miles and then the noise would return. So I had to shell out and it's not cheap. Um, cameraman, I, th I think you can help me. I, th I think the bill was, was less than 1,000. Is that about right? Uh, for front for front wheel bearings left and right even though my mechanic said it was a waste of money and a luckily my brake shop was working with me and they put new pads and rotors on it and lo and behold noise is gone I put 10,000 miles on the car uh, no click noises and it works out great so that's something that you may want to keep in mind when you're shopping for a GMC terrain I, I would suggest take it in a parking lot, turn that steering wheel all the, all the way, listen for any type of wheel bearing clicks, um, listen for any type of brake noises, and because really after 100, 120,000 miles, it is time to possibly change your wheel bearings on a GMC terrain, or on a lot of cars actually. So those are my tips. So what we're gonna do now is we've got uh, one final test uh, for the GMC. Can it make it up a off-road hill? And uh, I wanna thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time. And uh, don't forget to click subscribe and join the tribe. Thank you, everyone.